Hi, I'm Christine from House of Smocking and in this video I'm going to show you how to do some, uh, make some smocked knickers. Now I've smocked it uh, across the waist and round the legs. Uh, you can smock the back as well, but for mine I've just put elastic in. And that just lines up with the smocking. The bows are purely decoration. So to cut the knickers out, I've got a little pattern here for some um, uh, romper bottoms that I've adapted. And I've, you need to extend the top edge and just extend this side outwards. So I've marked the, the leg that I'm going to cut the extra bit out and marked where the width is. So I'll cut that out now. So I've cut the knicker pattern out and it's on the fold. So the next thing I want to do is I want to overlock this top edge. And now you can see that I've overlocked the top edge. Is it going to come into view? Focus. No. There you go. Just take that thread off. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over this edge for five centimetres and press in place. So I'll do that now. So now you can see that I've pressed it over all the way along. And now it's ready for pleating. But first, just to secure this, I'm going to do a long stitch all the way along this edge. So I'll go and show you that. So now I'm sewing a long stitch, um, let's stitch the length five. And I think you can just see, I'm just sewing along this edge, just on the inside edge, just to secure this. You don't have to, but if it maybe give you a bit more confidence for when you put the fabric through the pleater. So I've sewn my seam just to keep the uh, fabric flat. Um, you don't need to do this, but as I say, it maybe helps uh, keep it um, flat as it going through the pleater. Now I've rolled the fabric onto my pleater, and as I've mentioned in other videos, I've rolled it with the right side facing upwards, because I roll my fabric over the top of the dowling. So for the top, I'm actually going to pleat up 11 half space rows, and I'm doing that just two spaces with the top edge two spaces past this first needle. So that lines with, um, so that's one, two, and that's the, the groove that I'm going to watch as I pleat it up. So I'll try and show you from this angle as I pleat it up. And you will notice that it will slightly walk, so you'll need to hold on to uh, this side of the fabric so that you can actually steer it back in place. Because you've got two different thicknesses, you've got a double thickness fabric on one side and a single on the other. So I'll just try and get, keep it in shot for you. And then we turn it. Okay. And then feed the fabric off the needles. Every, probably with this one, probably every, um, every turn of the handle. So I'll keep pleating this up and then come back to you when I've finished. So now you can see that I've pleated up the waistband uh, with 11 half space rows. Now I'm now going to pleat up the legs. Now for the more experienced people, I would leave the legs till you've done the side seams so that you can do them all in one go. But most of my videos, in fact all my videos, are based on beginners. So I'm going to do the legs next. So I'm going to pleat round from the crotch all the way round to the side seam. And I'm going to do that for both, both sides. Okay, so along this edge. So as mentioned, I left the pleated threads long uh, so I could flatten the fabric out. And that just makes it much easier to actually get the legs onto the pleater. So this time I've actually got five half space rows uh, 
uh, threaded up with the needles and then I'm actually two two notches away that, um, from the needle, sorry, two notches from there to the needle and I'm lining that edge up at the back. You can see. And then I'm just going to pleat up the the legs as you would normally. And then once you've done one leg, the roll the down and the other leg onto the dowling and pleat up the other leg. So now you can see that I've pleated up the legs, but I've actually left the uh, threads long like the waist and flattened it out uh, so that I can attach lace to the legs. And But I'm going to also unpick the threads for about two inches from both sides. So we just unpick them. like so and then tie them off but we're going to attach the lace next so now I'm just stitching the lace on and I've got the right side of the lace to the right side of the fabric and I've just got the edge of the lace just just close to the edge of the fabric and I'm just doing a straight uh, stitch in the heading of the lace so standard stitch length and just sewing straight down so I've done my first row of stitching for the lace along the straight edge. So I'm now going to fold that flat and then press it upwards. So I'm pressing the seam up and the lace down. So I've just pressed the lace down and the seam up. So I'm now going to do a zigzag stitch across this edge. So I'm going to do a stitch length, I'll show you. So I've got a stitch width of 2.6 and a stitch length of 1.3 uh, and that's on the zigzag. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up the edge of my fabric with the edge of my foot so, so that it all lines up so that my zigzag goes from the, the ditch there over to the width of the seam each time. So now you can see that I've just zigzagged over the lace. Now this is an imperial batiste and it does fray quite a bit so you'll get little bits, fluffy bits like this. So if you just tip the, make it crease over your finger and then you can just nip these off without catching your threads. Just keeping your scissors flat so they don't catch them and just tidy them up. Okay. So that's the lace finished and I'll do the same for the back. Um, now I've unpicked as I mentioned for two inches um, from the leg edge just so that you don't get uh, the gathered or the smocking between the legs so it's just more comfortable. And then I'm going to just unpick for one centimetre at this edge which will be the seam allowance. And the same at the other end. And then I'm going to pull them up and tie them off. So I've tied the leg off to approximately 10 centimetres. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the other one just to show you um, how to do it by attaching the side seams first and then we can join the pleater threads to the back part and then you can smock it all in one go so that you don't have a join. So the next bit is to do your smocking. So we're going to unpick these threads just for one centimetre at the side and that just gives you the seam allowance.
and you can actually now remove the this thread that you put in just to hold it while you are pleating up the fabric so you can just remove that So I've now pulled up the pleater threads and I've tied off to about 22 centimetres. So I would then mark the centre pleat and do my smocking. Now the smocking design is entirely up to you. I used a three step and one step combination stitch. So I had one cable, wave down, a baby wave, and then three cables, a half step wave, and one cable so that's one and three with just a wave in between and then on the very last row I added just an extra little bit to make it go into a point so for the back they are pretty much the same as the front as far as the legs are concerned so we've pleated the legs up and we've unpicked the two two inches we've folded over the top but rather than pleating it up what I've done is I've done four rows you'll see of a straight stitch and they should line up with the pleater threads so what I'll be doing is I'll be putting elastic through those three casings So I'm now threading my three pieces of elastic through. I've got a safety pin on the end of each one and I'm just going to feed it through until that end just disappears inside. And once it does, then I can carry on feeding. So I just want it to come just inside. And then I'm going to do a sewing line down there to secure it. And I'll do that one for each, do that for each three. So I've secured the elastic inside now, so now I can just carry on and just feed them through and gather it all up till I get to the other end. Okay. So there you can see that I've got my three casings for the elastic, so that stretches nicely. So now we'll do the side seams. Now I like to do French seams, uh, but you can do ordinary seams and overlock if you wish. Uh, but to do a French seam for either side, I want to put the wrong sides together and then matching the tops and the bottoms, we're going to do a small seam. Now I haven't smocked this yet, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I can still make them up and smock them after. So for the French seam, I've done my first seam and trimmed it down. So it's very narrow. Okay. And then pressed it flat and then folded folded it over. And I'll now do my second seam line to enclose the first one. So personal preference on the legs is if you want to do it in two halves, then you can either have the knots meeting in the middle or feed them through to the back so that the pleats continue but really you could smock that all in one go anyway because the pleats would pull together nicely uh, but personal preference would be to do the the legs last of all so do your front and the smocking and the back do the side seams and then do the legs so you would pleat up the legs add the lace and then draw it all up together so still unpicking um, for two inches at the crotch there and tying off same as well on there two inches from there and then smocking all the way through so next you would smock the legs and I've just done two rows of the one, st uh, one cable three cable arrangement and then a cable stitch all the way along the bottom but uh, you can do whatever smocking design you would like. So the last thing to do and to finish off is the crotch seam. 
and again we do a French seam so we start with our two seams the wrong sides together and we do our first seam and then we press it fold it over and do our second seam and here we have the uh, French seam finished on the crotch and the um, knickers really finished if you wanted to add a bow to the side then you could just put a strip of ribbon sew it along the edge down there and then tie it into a bow And there we have the little knickers so i'm hoping you've enjoyed the video and hopefully i'll have some instructions available and downloadable pattern on housesmocking.co.uk thank you